The method of undetermined coefficients can be very powerful if you need to determine a particular solution of a second order linear differential equation. However, this method only works for certain types of right hand sides like polynomials or exponentials or sines and cosines or combinations of those. You might wonder whether we have a more general method that works for all right hand sides. Well, yes, we do have such a method. It's a generalization of the integrating factor to solve for first order differential equations. Well, this method is called variation of parameters and can even be generalized to higher order differential equations. So, why didn't we start with this variation of parameters instead of the method of undetermined coefficients? Well, you already guessed there has to be a catch somewhere, and there is. In cases where the method of undetermined coefficients works, variation of parameters may work as well, but can be a lot harder. The advantage of variation of parameters is that it can be applied to problems where the method of undetermined coefficients won't work. So, let us take a look at variation of parameters in this video. Well, what's the idea? First of all, you determine the uh, solution of the complementary equation over here. And you know that the general solution would be, be c1 times y1 of x plus c2 times y2 of x. Now the idea of variation of parameters is that you vary the parameters c1 and c2 in such a way that you find a particular solution. So your particular solution is of the form some u1 of x, where you have to determine u1 of x times y1 of x, solution of the complementary equation, plus u2 of x, unknown function, times y2 of x, solution of the complementary equation. Now, we have two functions, u1 of x and u2 of x, which have to be determined, so we can uh, specify two constraints. Well, the first constraint, we'll use that to simplify our calculations later on, and a second constraint uh, uh, is a constraint such that our particular solution by p of x becomes a solution of the differential equation. So, what do we do? Well, first we differentiate. So we have our yp, differentiate yp prime, so we get u1 prime times y1 plus u1 times y prime uh, plus u2 prime y2 plus u2 times y2 prime. And now we use our first condition. We simplify the problem a bit and we simplify a setting the combination of this term, this, that term first and third term to zero. So that will be our first condition, which means that we are only left for y, y particular prime with u1 y prime plus u2 y2 prime. So there we are. And then if we compute the second uh, derivative of y particular, so first differentiate uh, the y1 again, so we will get u1 y1 double plus differentiate u1 uh, and leave bar 1 prime plus leave u2 and differentiate y2 again, plus product rule u2 prime times y2 prime. So what happens if you uh, substitute this in the ODE? Well, we get a times y double, so y particular double, that's this term over here, plus b times y particular prime, so y particular prime is over here, plus c times uh, 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 y, so here we have our y, so that's over here. And then we see that we can clean up a bit because we have a times uh, u1 times y1 double plus b times u1 times y1 prime plus c times u1 times y1. And those together are u1 times the homogeneous equation, so they zero out. Something similar happens for the terms as a y double. So a times y double times u2 plus b times y2 prime times u2 plus c times u2 times y2. So we get a u2 times the homogeneous equation, so that zeroes out as well. So we are left with only two terms, a times those two terms, and they have to be equal to u of x in order to uh, satisfy the uh, differential equation over here. So this is will be our second condition. So in order to find u1 and u2, we'll have two conditions. Here is the second equation, 
And here's the first equation. So with a specific geomix, those two equations will need to be solved.